Hey everybody, it's Doug here. Welcome back to the channel. Welcome back to a new playthrough series. I feel like I've been doing a whole lot of horror games and stuff like that, but that's what it is. And here we are again, this time with Final Girl. I just got my core box and my all my Kickstarter stuff from Van Ryder Games, which by the way, are making really excellent and cool games. This one is based off the hostage negotiator mechanics and rethemed and redone in such a way that I think is pretty fantastic. Um, we are going to do a playthrough series. I'm going to attempt to do uh, every character, not every character, at least one, one final girl from every game box and each location and villain. Now, I'm not going to mix them up. I'm going to do them as they're intended to be played initially. And then later on, you can go back and mix and match and do what you want. And you can have a final girl from one box, go to Happy Trails and fight uh, Geppetto, the bad guy. You know, you can do all kinds of crazy things, but not in this series. Now, what I am going to show you right now is a little bit about the game itself and the boxes and how they're stored. There's some, some really cool, clever ideas. Hats off to Van Ryder Games for this one. Uh, as you can see, I have these mats out here. These are um, you know, neoprene-type mats that uh, will make up the board. And then we have the core box here. Now, what's interesting about the game is this core box cannot be played by itself. You have to have one of their boxes. And if you were to say, well, what's the most basic box? It would be this one, uh, the Camp Happy Trails and Hans the Butcher uh, box. And we'll take a look at that in just a moment. But... Again, this is the core box. Now, some of the cool things about these boxes, they're magnetic, and they come into, uh, they, they open this way. Now, in the other boxes, the magnetic boards are actually part of the game. It's really very clever. We have here, we don't need this because we're using the mats, but if you weren't using the mats, you could use this board to as your, your player board, basically. Or not the uh, horror track and all that stuff. It's uh, a time track. Your player board, essentially. And then, uh, of course, you have the basic rule book here. The game is not, like, if you played a uh, Hostage Negotiator, you have a really good idea how this plays. Um, and I've played a bit of Hostage Negotiator, so I have an idea. Though there are some differences, and we'll take a look at those. We're not going to call them out specifically. We're just going to play the game. And if you're familiar with one, you'll know the differences. But that's okay. Uh, there's, there's some things that are changed in this game that are really cool to fit the theme and all that stuff. It's got a great turn summary on the back. It's, it talks about how your about your action cards, about the turn summary, and about the icons that you'll see in the game and what they represent. Because these bad guys are going to be coming after you. Now, in this base box, you'll see some things that are part of the base box and not. So I'm going to call those out. First off, I'm going to take the little plastic lid off of here. So you have the instructions in the board, like so. These are part of the base game. These miniatures are not. These are the miniature, this is the miniature box of the final girls. These are nice hard plastic, but they're really small. So they can all fit in here, and I hope they don't bend or break. I'm going to try and make sure they don't. They're all staying in there pretty nicely without getting in each other's way, but this is one of the final girls. And uh, their miniature is actually in a book, and I'll show you that real quick because I think that's valuable. There is a lore book that has a bunch of scenarios in it. That, now, again, this came with the Kickstarter. You wouldn't necessarily get this. If you bought a retail copy of this, I don't know what you get in the retail copy. We'll have to see. Uh, but this is the Kickstarter version of it. And you can see, by the way, the artwork's really awesome. The whole, the whole presentation of this game is just super cool. And I just wanted to find the one. There's the one with the axe. That is going to be Rico, or Rico. Uh, I think it's Rico. Rico Rivers. Um, we might play her in this first scenario. It's either going to be her or Lori Carpenter. I'm not sure which. We'll see. But anyway, you can see there's a bunch of miniatures here for that. That's part of the game. These tokens here, these little birdie tokens, are also part of an expansion that have to do with this um, this uh, other part of the game. I can't remember the name of the expansion. But it's in the book. Um, it basically has something to do with birds. <laughs> you can add you can add uh, stuff to it. Um, but you do. it does require, like, some of the... There are actually ones, like, see this one with the little bird here? It actually requires the terror from above is what it's called. And that's the expansion that you have. Now, I keep this in here just to keep things fresh because a lot of wooden bits. You got your dice here, you got your big meeples which represent you and or the, the villain, but we're, we have miniatures. So we're going to use miniatures. Uh, these are all the victims in here, all nicely done. This tray is really good. These are some of the tokens that we'll need. Uh, and then there's the cards themselves. 
These three, by the way, I highly recommend that these three things you put on the bottom. I didn't at first, and I realized I was going to bend cards trying to get them out. If this, these are on the bottom, you can reach in and get them all out so much easier. Uh, and these are like, if there's, for example, I think in one scenario, there's all these people are on a campfire. So you mark the campfire with its token and you put them all, all the people at the campfire, victims in the campfire on here. Uh, you notice there's some special victim colors too. Like, I don't know how this plays out in the game yet. We'll have to see. But uh, these, this first set of cards, these terror cards are the birds, the cards for the bird, uh, the terror from above uh, expansion, which do fit in the box when they're unsleeved. I think if you sleeved your cards, they wouldn't. And then here's your basic action cards that we're going to play out on the board. And again, they got a lot going on. I know it's, if you haven't played it, it does seem uh, like, what is all this stuff? But it's really not that difficult to figure out. And we will have a heck of a lot of fun with that. But I do want to put the action cards on top here. So we're going to check that out. And then there's some other components, these little tokens, which I'm afraid I'm going to lose at some point because they're super small. And then there's the time track token, which we will use. And this token, I think, is for um, the uh, terror. Yeah, the terror marker. So we can use that too. Anyway, um, that's just what's in the very base box. You, box. you notice this isn't a complete game, because it's not. Um, it, it, if you bought it retail, I have to imagine it comes with probably Cap, Camp Happy Trails and Hans. We're going to take a look at that right now and uh, see what we got going on here. Now, anyway, so that's... Look how nicely this... And on the shelf, on the bookshelf, that's going to look so nice. Okay, but we're going to take a look now, because this is really where the meat of the game is. And we are going to start here with the first one, and I'll, I'll quickly show you the others. There's quite a few, quite a bit in here. Now, uh, again, there's most of the things in here are coming, or they come with the base game box, but some things don't. I'll point out what doesn't. It's mainly just a miniature or two. Okay, but basically, if you take this lid, this magnetized lid, like this, you can see that there's a little pamphlet on Hans himself, and here he is in all his glory. This is the villain Hans. Uh, it shows um, his where his terror track starts, where his health is. Uh, and it shows uh, he's out at the Kmart or whatever. Anyway, this is his track that's going to make him more powerful. Not you know, They're all different. All the villains are different. And he's going to get a dark power and a finale right here. It's pretty cool. Uh, and basically, when you look at this board, this board is going to go right here on the table. Now, you don't have to play with these mats, okay? That, that You can. It, you don't have to. Now, one thing I thought was interesting, all the trays are the same. So... Like, um, I think I put Hans on the other side, so he's there. But all the trays are the same. They have these two little buckets and then this. Sometimes there's cards in here, sometimes there's not. In this case, there's not. you got the terror cards, which you're going to mix with the cards from the location you use. You have the final girls right here. Now, they're going to start here. And as you accomplish these goals by saving people, if you get them all, then you, not only do you get all the benefits here, but you get to flip this and you have a special power. It's pretty cool. Um... And then these are some of the cards for the villain himself that, that make him different and interesting as well. His dark power and his finale. So you'll get to see that in action. Um, and that's basically what's on this side of the box. And then over here there's, a, there's some components. It's a component list and some special rules. If there are any, there aren't any special rules with him. You can see his image there. This, actually, this side has nothing else to do there. That's it. So you put the lid back on. That's it. Put this here. And then when you want to box it up, you just uh, put it there, and it all seals up in a magnetic... I, I don't know how... I wonder how long these magnets and things are going to last. I would think a long time. I don't know. You flip it over, you can also see that there's another final girl there. We do know we have two of them. And you flip this up, and now this is your location board. So this goes right there. Now again, if you were playing without it, you'd just put this flat on the table, and it would be... It, it, you notice it aligns with everything on here, so... You get some stuff. You can have cards. This is your map of Camp Happy Trails. Again, it talks about special rules here. There are some. Co there's a component list. Special rules. There are none. And then again, the same tray on the other side. Here are the markers that you will use during the game. One of them's a secret passage, I think. Another one's a bear trap from the cards. And here is Hans the Butcher himself with this big hammer and his pig-faced helmet. And here are the location cards that you would mix in with the other side, with the villain. And this, the reason it's done this way, and it's all very carefully marked so you can tell exactly where it's from, is so that you can mix and match. Now, we're not going to mix and match in this case. We're going to have everything from this set. And that's okay. But it's on the, I didn't show you this, but on Hans's cards, it doesn't show that. It shows a pig face. So you can know when you separate these tarot cards back out, you can tear, set them back up. And you notice the symbols here with the hands of the butcher. There's some 
uh, set up scenarios. These are going to change the game around on you a bit and have things start in different places. There's items. So there's a lot of replay in this game, guys. And then there's some, some really cool events that can trigger during the game. They all fit nicely in this little tray, just like so. Put the, the little uh, top back on there. Put this right here with your components list. And seal it up. And there is the game box, just like that. Very, very tidy and neat and very clever. I just, I'm really impressed with the cleverness of that. So we'll take a look at the other, I mean, we'll take a look at the other boxes. There's not going to be, you're not going to see much difference in them. But we, I'll just, maybe I'll just show you the boxes. Then we'll start playing them. We'll save some things for some surprises. This one is the Final Girl Geppetto. You notice it's at a circus. And the location is going to be, let's take this off there. Um, Carnival of Blood. And these, these are basically on there. This is the cell sheet that's, that's on the back, but that's not part of the box. You can take it off. You don't need it. It's cool art. I'm keeping them. But you can see this has some great art on it, too, with the, the final girls from this box. And it's the Carnival of Blood, and you've got some cool stuff there. So basically, I'll take a look at the, just show you the map board, if nothing else. This is the map board for the Carnival of Blood. And these numbers are when people, when the 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 victims get, one of them gets killed, and there's multiple locations, they go running away. Now, there could be some other mechanics. We'll have to see how this works with this one. Uh, but I imagine there's some other mechanics where these, these matter differently. Um, but this is the Carnival of Blood. You see there's two locations. There's a Carnival and the exit here. I think those look like the only places you can save people. That might be interesting because you, if you get them off the board, again, you start getting special things. And there are there is are quite a few special rules for this one, for example. So, by the way, do not lose this little sheet. That is important. And then you can see here there's some tokens in here that go with this scenario, special to this one. And then there's the cards themselves. Um, let's put these back right. So we'll put those here, and there's uh, this thing, this terror trap reference. And then there's the cards, the setup cards. And you notice they, they do stay in here pretty nicely. They're not going to go anywhere, even though they might move around a little bit in there. You, they go back in pretty, pretty handily. And again, you just put that little card thing on top there, and boom. Wait, see that? Nah, hold on. There we go. There we go. And again, you flip it over, and then you get the other side, the the uh, villain himself and his track. And again, some different things. Mainly, you see that their dark powers come up and they do more damage. That's usually what happens there. I don't know if any of them are different, but that is what it is. And this talks about Geppetto himself and his special abilities, which there are quite a few, uh, with his puppets and everything like that. And I'll show you those in a second. There are tokens for the puppets. These are these guys right here. But... We also have teeny little puppet miniatures, which are pretty sweet. They're, they're teeny. I'm afraid I'm going to lose them, too. And here is Geppetto himself. So, like I said, we'll see this. And then again, he's got his set of tarot cards. And then the final girls, Asami. And uh, there, I, thought, I guess there's only one in this. And there's all kinds of stuff in here. So, anyway, I guess there's only... I thought there was two tarot... There's usually two final girls. Where's the other one? Maybe there's not in this one. Just one. Um... Asami, and I think that's it. Just Asami. I'll take it. That's okay. Oh, there she is. Charlie. Charlie is the other final girl right there. And they all have special abilities unique to them. You notice that their boards are not the same. So Asami is different than her, and their special abilities will not be the same. I'm going to leave these for a surprise, unless you want to pause and read them. So there's that one. I think you get the idea. And, uh, yeah, so they're all basically laid out the same. Right, so it'll be a surprise for everyone when we get to the next one. And I'll just show you how many of them there are that came in the Kickstarter. And I imagine you'll be able to buy these um, separately. Like, you get you get the base game with the Camp Happy Trails and Hans uh, piece right there. And then you get all of these here. And then I'll put another, there's another row of them, just two more. There's this one, which is Creech Manor. And... Um, the Poltergeist, which I think is going to be really... I, I saw a little playthrough of that one once. I thought that was interesting. Then there's Maple Lane and Dr. Fright. Now, these are modeled after some villains. You can kind of get the idea as you go. And then there's uh, Inkanyaba. Um, and that's I think that's the villain. And, oh, still got this on there. And the Sacred Grove. And again, there's multiple uh, characters in each one. Like I said, I can't, really can't wait to play it. I'm excited about it actually. Um, so we're going to do that, and I'm going to get us set up right now for a 
uh, uh, game. And by the way, I probably I didn't say this, but I'm sure I'll put it in the notes and everything in the credits that go by. This is a solo only game. You play it solo. Period. End of story. There's nothing else about it. It's all all a solo based game, and that's pretty cool. So let's clear these off, and we're going to set up to play Camp Happy Trails against Mr. Hans and see if we can beat him. It's going to be fun. I can't wait to figure that out. Uh, anyway, I'll go through the setup with you all uh, as we play and uh, get you going. Now, we do know that we're going to be playing this scenario, so we're going to just simply do this right now and get it, get it going. we got Camp Happy Trails here. We're going to place this in our location board, location segment, and we got the components list I will keep with the game. We're going to pull out all of the components that we need for this right here. I'll just put these right here for now. And here is our villain. Here are the tear cards, the setup cards, and other stuff that we need for that side of the board. Then we will flip it over and get the other side open. And here we go. So now we got Hans. Now again, there's no special abilities for Hans, but we'll see how he plays out. Uh, I don't know if these are supposed to really lay. I think they're supposed to lay flat. I, I'm not sure. They tend to pop up a little bit. I don't think that's a big deal, especially playing with these mats. But maybe if you... Uh, because there's uh, places for dark powers here. There's places for the three locations. And I guess it'd be easy enough to keep track of which one's which. But we have all the um, tarot cards for Hans right here. We have the two final girls. We'll take pull those out. And we have the special things for Hans as well. Put that back on, and since there are no special rules for Camp Happy Trails, we'll just put this aside for now and get into the, the meat of the game. So basically you can see that we have that set up here. Now I'm kind of probably going a little out of order, but I don't really care. It's not that big of a deal. Um, and basically these boxes are called feature film boxes, just so you know. Now we are going to set up the player board. Let's uh, now. Normally, like I said, we would be doing putting the player board here. Let's take a look at these abilities and see which one we want to do. We got Lori and Rico. Rico has six health. Lori has five health. When you are in the same space as the enemy and inflict damage, you do an additional damage. I like that a lot. Once per action phase, if an enemy is within two spaces of you, two spaces, you may move that enemy's move to that enemy space for free, so she can hunt him down. For each additional victim save, we're going to get a time. I think that that's basically what happens when you save a victim after you've activated this. And then on here, this is going to lower the terror rating when we save somebody. This will give us two time. That will give us a health. Another two time. Uh, take an action card with a max value of time value of two. We'll see what that means. And move one space. So what do we got here? Two time, a health. Take the planning action card specifically. That's interesting. Move one space and move one space. So she gets some movement. I think we're going to play Lori. I like the damage factor. If we, if we can get to that. If we can get to that. So that will stay in the game. Um, so we got that going on. Now let's uh, let's continue. We're going to get the rest of this game set up. Uh, I got the rules here. We're setting up the space for the villain right now. So we're going to take some markers and place them down. I just want to make sure I'm getting the right markers for the right thing. Yes, yes. Okay, so the bloodlust marker, the little red marker, goes, um, I believe it goes right here. Yeah, that's where it starts, right down there. And then the time marker is going to start on the six right here. Uh, and then, oh, so we got some dice. Uh, we also have a marker that's going to mark the, um, where is it? There's a token that's supposed to mark this terror track. i got to find it. Oh, there we go. Horror marker, right here. It is going to start on four. So we know that, uh, I'll stand up, we know that Hans is right there on the four space, which means that we get to roll two dice right now. There are, we can get more dice, that's for sure, but we only have two. Now I have to find uh, Lori's miniature in the miniature box, so let's take a look at that and see. Uh, what is her miniature? Now, you remember in this, this book we can see, so we're looking for this one here. Uh, let me go find, I found it already, easy enough to find. Here is Lori's miniature. I mean, these are really nice miniatures for being as small as they are. Um, I should paint them. I always say that. And that's that's that. So basically, we got that track set up. It's not that, not that hard to figure out. Uh, then we got all the locations we're going to have to deal with. 
and we're going to set up the core box here. So let's uh, let's do some more setup stuff. We're going to I got all the cards. Let's get rid of these tarot cards. Now we know what we're going to do with the tarot cards. So we're going to take all those. That's all of these here. And I think we're going to shuffle them all together and we're going to draw 10 if I'm not mistaken. This is kind of a blind playthrough. I, I mean, I have an, an idea for sure how to play the game, but this is kind of a blind playthrough. So I know that we basically are going to mix all these up here and we're going to shuffle them and draw 10 out of the pool. And remember, half of these are low. Well, I don't know if it's exactly half, but there's a set of cards located for the camp and a set of cards located for haunts and those aren't the cards that go on we're going to select from these as well but uh, and we're going to get uh, just because it's easier to set up this way we're going to put the tarot deck out i'll show you where that goes um, as we activate uh, get ready to set up the tarot card now we're going to also set up a scenario with victims and all that stuff it's going to be a lot of fun I can't wait to see uh, what happens. Now, the other thing is, remember I told you we had those those three tiles that you should put at the bottom of the deck. On this map, they're right here, so you don't actually have to take them out at all, which is kind of neat. Um, but we're also going to place out all of the, the action cards to play and everything else that needs to go on. Now, you can see that there are some things on the board, like uh, there's other tracks that we can use. Um, we probably will use them just so we can use the map to its most effective way but uh, anyway I think I've shuffled this up enough I just want to double check this uh, let's see um, yeah custom dice taking action cards yeah uh-huh uh-huh yeah okay um, then in the feature film box we're, we're going to place the chosen killer on the table above the play board we got that already we're good there we're going to shuffle the villains finale cards in place of those so let me show you that I guess we'll do this in the order we're supposed to so these are these are the cards for him. The finale cards are the ones on the top. So we'll take those three. There's three of them that go into the game. So we'll just randomize. I don't know what any of them do, so it's not like it's going to change the outcome for me to shuffle or not. Okay, and then that goes right there on the finale box right there. And then this goes back into the game, and then we do the same thing. There's four of these uh, dark power cards. And I think we put, that's the next step. We put one on the board. I hope I'm not shaking the camera too much. I'm standing very close to it so I can demonstrate this, but uh, let's see. Um, yeah, the finale card, so we're going to put that face down. Yep, all good there. All right, so anyway, let's do that. We're going to place that one there, and then these two, I don't think they go away. I think I'm at the top of the dip board right now because I think you can have more minor powers come out. Those might be in the tarot deck. I don't know. We'll see. Uh, then, uh, like I said, we do have to shuffle up the tear deck. We did that. And uh, let's see. I just want to, again, I want to make sure I'm getting it all right for you. Let's see. The tear deck. Uh, shuffle the killer's tear cards and the location cards and shuffle them together into one deck and deal out ten cards. I was correct about that. We're, gonna, we're doing, the, doing it in the right way. Okay, so here's what we're going to do with this. We're going to take this deck. And we're going to go one. I'm going to do this stuff it's just to make sure we get a good variety two, three, taking them all from different places, four, five, shuffle them up some more, six, seven, eight, nine, and ten. That's going to be our tarot deck right there. I'm going to put these aside, get these uh, into their space. And you notice I do not have not sleeved my cards. I, I tend not to because um, if I really like the game, I'm gonna keep it forever and play it forever. If I don't, if I'm not, if I only play a game a few times or something, and I decide it's time to move it on, then the cards will be in fine shape anyway. So um, I think you can kind of you can, you can't really make out where the tarot deck goes, but it goes right there. Okay, so our tarot deck is done. We have got that set up. Let's see. Then we're gonna shuffle the location item cards together, and we're gonna make three piles. Deal three piles out of four cards each face down. So, what are the item cards? They are in here as well. Let's pull those out. Okay. There they are. There, there's quite a there's a good number of them. We're going to shuffle these up, and we're going. Those are going to go in the item the three item decks pieces up above. Okay. And so let's uh, get this done real quick. Let's see. I, I don't know how. I mean. I don't, I don't know any of them, so I guess it won't matter if these shuff are shuffled, but we're going to go one, two, three. We're going to put four of them in each pile. Just tilt down a little bit. Three, 
three, four, the rest of them go aside. Now we're going to take this, we're going to flip the top card up, and we're going to have an aluminum bat in the, in the cabins. There's going to be an aluminum bat, that makes some sense. In the uh, docks, we're going to have mysterious pills. We'll see what those do later. And then in the utility shed, we're going to have a whistle. I'm sure that whistle will come in handy, even though it sounds like a silly item. Okay, so uh, just looking at that, you have to taste face card pile up. Shuffle the location set of cards and draw one. That's the, that's going to be our setup. So let's do that. That's going to cause a whole bunch of things to happen. So we might pause in the, the filming for a second. Let's see what we get. We're going to get capture the flag. Okay, that's going to be our scenario. So we'll leave that out for a moment. The rest of them I'm just going to put off to the side of the table. And let's go, we'll have to set that up. It should basically shows a number of things where uh, victims are going to go start with where we're going to start. So, for example, Lori is going to start at makeout point right here. She's smooching it up with some guy. Let's get these tokens off the table. We don't need them right now. Uh, we can put them right here in this cool special spot for tokens. And then Hans himself is going to start right here. And then we're going to get, I'll just set it up right now. I'm already doing it. Might as well do it, right? Um, it looks like there's no special meeples. We're going to get a guy here. We're going to get two here. Uh, let's see. Two here. Um, one here. Two here. And two here. We don't have any big special groups of people. That's interesting. Um, okay, and uh, let's see, core box icon, indicate final girl. Yep, yep, shuffle is just, just double checking everything. Uh, place them out, place out the yellow folks. Keep the setup face up. Yeah, we're going to do that. It's going to be right here in this setup spot at the top of the board. You can't see that, so I'll raise the camera up there. It is right here. I wish this would stay down. That's one flaw in the game. That's going to go right there. We got that covered. Uh, and then let's see what goes next. Very important, take the nine black final health tokens from the core box and mix them up face down. The sides with the dice, plus one dice on them, is basically what you're looking for. And uh, icon showing, and then place one in the circle on the bottom side of the killer's board, one and uh, one and the on the um, and one on the uh, final girl. Right, black health token, final girl. Yeah, okay. Yeah, so bottom left and upper whatever. Okay, so let's uh, get that set up. Okay, here are the tokens that we're talking about here. Now what happens with this is when, like let's say, we get clear all of Hans's health and there's only that one token left. Well, you know, sometimes villains don't die. Sometimes heroes don't die right away in these movies. So there's a trope um, portion of the game actually where uh, once we get down to that spot, this token, these tokens we're gonna get flipped up. One of these tokens might be blank I guess a number of them are blank. Oops, didn't mean to do that. And a number of them are have something on them. But we won't know because we're going to set these aside and not look at them. We just know that we're going to pick one. I'll pick this one, put it here on here on Hans's board right down there at the bottom. Then we're going to pick Lori's and put it up there. Now these could mean that they get no extra health. There we go. And then we're going to stack these up. We're not going to look at them and put them aside back in the box. So there we have it. Okay. Um, and that is the setup for that. I think, basically, I think we're pretty darn set up. I got the bloodless marker on the correct space. It says place it on the right side of the killer board, down at the, basically the one space. And we're going to, as he kills people, he's going to gain victims, and that's going to give him power. So when we have dead people, that's where things are going to go. Um, I got this, uh, the second killer meeple on the horror track. We shuffle the location event cards and place them face down next to the location board. Draw the top card and follow the instructions. So let's do that. And here's that deck right here. So we're going to give this a quick shuffle. And we're just about, we're just about ready to play. I'm excited about this. This is going to be a lot of fun. And again, I, I, next to the next games, I will just do the, have this setup ready. Except for I will show you before we do, I'll pick the uh, um, setup card. And we'll do the items together and some things like that. But some of the basic setup... Uh, stuff I will do off camera. I just wanted to show you guys this time around to show you how it works. And okay, I think that's good enough. I think we've shuffled it quite a bit. There's not that many cards. Give another cut, and this will be the one we're going to do. Let's see. 
Uh, that's going to go on the event deck way over here at the top, and then we're going to look at this card. It says, Boyfriend, um, if he's willing to, to die for me, who am I to stop him? Well, that's not very nice, Lori. Okay, the victim closest to you is now your boyfriend. If the boyfriend dies in your space, start the next action phase with 12 time. So, <laughs> this is interesting. I guess you want your boyfriend to bite it. If the boyfriend leaves play, discard this card. So, if you... If you um, if the boy, boyfriend leaves play, you get one of your bonuses. But if he dies, you get 12 time. Time is money in this game. It's how we buy our cards and everything else like that. So the one closest to us would be, I guess, closest to us by what? By, by technically, the one closest to us is him um, because that's the one closest by the paths. Remember, see, you can see these paths don't go over here. So uh, when I guess closest would be this guy. I'm going to say it's the guy in the utility shed. We're going to replace him with a special meeple, special blue meeple. I don't know what my boyfriend is doing over in the utility shed, but that's where he is. Now, I could say closest being this one. Maybe that's true. Um, I'll put it here for now just in case. Maybe that's it is physically the closest location with a person in it, but uh, maybe that's not how it works. We'll see. But we have to collect our boyfriend anyway. That would make sense. He's up at the cab near the cabins. He's... Um, heading toward the, the bunkers over here where the cabins are. Hmm, we'll know. I don't know. We'll see. Okay, well, um, and then uh, the next thing, the last thing we have to do is set up is set up all the action cards. So I will do that off camera and I'll show you what that looks like. Okay, here is our play area. Here is our, here's the cards we're going to start with. We're going to start with these zero time cards. And these allow us to do a number of things. And I'll, I'll go over a couple of them quickly so you basically get the concept of play. We can play all of these cards, if, we're, if possible, in a given round. But the more cards we play, the less time we're going to have to be able to buy new cards for the next round. So we have to be judicious about our card play. Now, this card is basically we play it to allow us to walk. And then we're going to roll our dice. Right now, we, because of where the terror level is at, we're going to have two dice. Fives and sixes are successes. Threes and fours could be successes if we're willing to exhaust or burn two cards to turn them into a success, right? And then ones and twos are just fails. Can't fix it, can't change it. So that's the, that's the dice right there. So you can see, now let's look at the card. So you can see if we get two successes, we can move up to two spaces for the cost of one time. One success, one space, cost of one time. No successes, yuck. We can move up to a space, take a health hit, and cost two time, or just spend two time and say, we didn't go anywhere. You can do all of that. Okay. Um, then we have, and we have two of those in our current hand. Okay. And then um, we are going to have a short rest. It's one card in our hand. Basically, if we are injured and we want to heal up, two successes gives us a health. Two successes gives us a health, but costs us a time. That two health, that's pretty good. And no time, that's pretty good. No successes, costs us we gain a health back, but the terror level goes up, we lose a time, and there's that, which I'm not sure what that is yet. That is, let's see, what is an X? Action phase immediately ends, and our turn immediately ends if we do this, if we fail this. Bad one to fail. Focus is a way we can reduce the terror track, right? So if we, um, and gains us some time, if we get two successes, we reduce the terror track down one. If we get the terror track down two, one, or zero, then we get three dice, to be able to attack with and, and roll. That's pretty good, or roll period. Okay, if we get one success, it reduces the terror track, but cost is time. If we get no successes, two time. And there's, there's little sayings down here. We'll talk about them as we play. Uh, that's focus. We got two of those, and we got weak attack. Basically, two successes gives us a hit. One success gives us a hit and hurts us. One success hurts us and ends our turn. Yeah, pretty simple, right? And then we have these other cool cards, and the reason they're laid out this way is because they're laid out by the... There's usually two of each of these weaker cards. There's one of each of these more expensive cards. We can recruit into our hand by spending time at the end of the turn. So after we've played our cards and all kinds of bad stuff happens, we can then spend the remaining time to get some additional stuff, right? And like search is important because we want items, so we're probably going to get a couple of those early on. Sprint allows us to move more. Improvise, uh, pretty good. This one is like your... You want one of these in your hand uh, at, as soon as you can because basically it's your reroll close call, reroll chance. And the board is really well, well laid out. So here is the so you see you have all your zero cost action cards here because every other round you're going to get all the ones you didn't use back because they don't cost anything, right? So even if you don't have any time, 
uh, you're going to have a, an upturn, downturn, upturn, and downturn, basically. And uh, that's the way that's going to go. And then in the item space, you see we have backpack or in-hand items because you can have one, two. This is the reason this is done this way. You can have one two-handed item or two one-handed items. And then all the items in your backpack. And then over here, you can see we got where the dead people go, right? When, when, the, when Hans kills some people. All right, but anyway, we're set up to go. And I think we're ready to rock. We got our villain on the board. We got Lori on the board. And we're ready to play. So in the next episode, we will get started with our gameplay. And I hope you enjoy this playthrough of Final Girl Hans the Butcher versus Lori at Camp Happy Trails. I can't wait to tell this story. Uh, it's going to be so fun. And uh, hopefully, remember like in the stories, the Final Girl basically is the last survivor. And so there's always people dying in the camp. And the Survivor Girl is the only one that can take on the villain. And it's so fun. All right, y'all, take care. We'll see you in the next episode, and I hope you enjoy this playthrough. Bye-bye.